All right, let's take a look at something really weird with digital metering and how what you're hearing is not exactly what's going on with digital mixing. And there are issues and concerns that you should know about. So what I've got here is I've got a wing, but this applies to other consoles. This happened to me first, mixing one of these videos in Adobe Premiere. Then I tested it in Adobe Audition and then tested it in other formats and confirmed the issue is there to some degree in Reaper as well as Pro Tools. And then I went and tested it on some of our bigger format digital consoles. All right, so let's take a look at what I got here. I've got white noise going into these four channels of the console. And out of that, it's going to the left, right, which is then going to the right hand side of this Duro meter, which is a wonderful high precision meter that's got one dB increments for each LED. Also, these go to two bus sends. And the bus end number one comes into this analog console and bus end number two goes into the other channel of this analog console. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two white noise signals and sum them together inside of the digital console. And I'm also gonna take those exact same two white noise signals, come out of the console and sum them together analog. And then we're going to be able to see on the left side of this meter, the analog summing. On the right side, we'll see the digital summing. And you'll be able to hear those two summed signals as well in the video. And I'm using white noise because it loads a lot more energy in the higher frequencies where digital struggles or has more challenges. Pink noise, it's got too much low frequency content to really see what's going on and white noise will help divulge this issue. All right, so we'll turn on the first white noise channel and it shows up here and shows up at minus 10 dB on the output of the wing, as well as minus 10 dB on the right side of the Duro meter. It also, when I unmute the analog, will show up as minus 10 dB on the left side of the Duro meter. And we can mute that and we can see that the digital is on this side and the analog is on this side. All good. Everything is working as planned. Now I'm going to unmute a second channel and they're going to sum together. Just taking two white noise sources that are identical and summing them together. And we should see 6 dB increase when you sum identical signals. Turn that on and we're at minus 4. So minus 10 to minus 4 is 6 dB. And over here on the output, we're at minus 4, we're at minus 4. Also, I've got the output of the digital console coming back in to a channel here so that we can see them returning. So we actually can look at the digital here, but we can also look at it here. And I've got the output of the analog coming back into these two. So these two here are, again, more metering reference points. All good. Does exactly like it should. Now, when you have two dissimilar signals that are fully decorrelated and have no relevance to each other, you should get an increase of 3 dB. Well, first, let's make sure these are correlated. So we'll turn them on and we will go to polarity. And I'm going to polarity reverse one of them goes to silence everywhere. Because they're fully correlated, they can cancel each other out perfectly when one is polarity reversed. If we change the volume, it will throw that off. Oh, I can do that. And we can find a null here. Great. We have fully correlated signals. We're getting a 6 dB increase. So now what I'm going to do is, instead of using identical sources, we're going to use dissimilar sources. When the sources are completely decorrelated and they don't have any common energy, we should get 3 dB of increase. And so by using a separate white noise generator, we should be decorrelated. So I'll do that and use oscillator number 2 on this channel 10. Let's go ahead and fire this up. 
and we can listen to, we should have 10, minus 10 on everything here, which we do. And when I fire up the other one, we should get a 3 dB increase. And we do. We get we're at minus 7 on both the duros. And we've got the 3 dB increase. We go from 0 to 4, about 3 dB here on the analog meters. But wait a minute. Look at the metering on the output of the wing. If I go to oscillator 1, watch the meters. The sound gets louder. The analog monitoring meters get louder. The analog console gets louder. Everything gets louder, but the digital meters on the wing stay exactly the same. No change. We can do this another way that's a little easier. I'll put it on oscillator one. And you can decorrelate pink noise or white noise with itself by delaying it. So we'll go to this channel here. And we will add a delay. Okay, we should see a 3 dB increase, no delay, add the delay, we see a 3 dB drop, take the delay out, we see a 3 dB increase, but again, the meter on the digital console stays exactly the same. It cannot hear that change in audio level. We can hear it, but the meter does not show it. Is the signal truly decorrelated? We can test that by inverting. So here is no delay, we invert, we get silence, we put a delay in there, we invert, and we get no change at all. Invert, no change, invert, no change. Take the delay out, correlated, we invert, so we know the sounds are decorrelated. We can do that with the white noise generator as well. And put the oscillator 2 on there. And again, take the delay off. We can invert. No change because it's fully decorrelated. And we go to oscillator 1. We're now correlated. So why doesn't this meter on the wing know that it got louder? Why is it totally clueless to that volume change of summing two decorrelated signals versus summing correlated signals? If the signals are the same, it says, oh yeah, it's louder, 6 dB. The analog meters, they know. The analog console, it knows. Everything knows. Even if I come out of the wing and back into the wing, it knows. We can see a drop everywhere but here on the output meters in the box. This happens not only in the wing, but it happens in software. It happens in, it happens in every digital mixing entity I've tested. The digital meters are not showing us what we hear. Now, part of that could be attributed to something that's of concern. If you're mixing at 96K, but your primary sound that you're dealing with is 20 to 20K. That means there's frequencies that could be doing all kinds of willy-nilly things, driving your meters down or carrying signals that mess with compressors or do all kinds of weird stuff that you have no ability to hear because your speakers don't reproduce it and our ears are not going to perceive it. Even if you can hear 40K, it's probably not gonna come out of the speakers. It's possible something like that's happening. This summation of two identical signals is being read by the meter properly in the digital domain. And summing two dissimilar signals looks the same to it as summing two similar signals. Even if the meter is reading something above, what is it reading and why? It shouldn't do that. The meter should be reading what is supposed to happen. And what is supposed to happen is dissimilar signals are supposed to increase 3 dB if they're of equal magnitude and fully decorrelated. And fully correlated should increase 6 dB. That's what should happen in the box. That's what should show up on the meters. 
that is what's showing up in analog summing, and it is what's showing up on analog meters, and it's not what's showing up on the meters built into the console. And I can confirm that this same thing happens on other consoles that are well known, and I will demo those as well. Two channels summed, the same white noise. Turn the delay on and off. Audio level increases, meters stay the same. Okay, put the delay in, take it out, put it in, take it out. Where's the meters, uh, the summing meters here? Put it in, take it out, the sound changes, and the metering does not. Okay, so we'll... we hear the volume change, but the metering does not change when we decorrelate versus correlate. On an Avid console, hitting the delay. Does not show the right metering there, but down here. So we go to Peak Ballistics, on the Avid. And we'll hit the delay now. Regardless of which metering you're using, the peak lights are still the same. Try the delay. Why don't you give this a shot? and tell me what happens. I would love to know if there's a single console out there where the meters read this correctly or it does what it's supposed to do internally such that the meters will show you something that's correct. So to do this, take a white noise generator and run it into two channels of the console and the output of those two channels run to left and right in mono. So they sum together and you can monitor at left and right. Next, to make sure that they're the same level, turn them both on and polarity reverse one of them. If you hear silence, you've got everything dialed in. If you hear noise with one polarity reverse, they're not summing properly. So you wanna do everything you can to make sure that when you polarity reverse one of the channels, you get silence and when you take the polarity reverse out, you get the noise. Mute one of them, check out your metering, unmute both of them, you should get a 6 dB increase. Look at your metering. Next, put a time delay on one of the channels. It has to be fairly long, longer than the longest wavelength we're dealing with, so over 40 or 50 milliseconds. And I just crank the delay all the way up and turn the delay on and off while listening to the sound. The sound should drop 3 dB when you turn the delay on and boost 3 dB when you turn the delay off. Do that while looking at your meters. Your meters should indicate the same thing you're hearing. And if they don't, there's something fishy going on. Why is this an issue? Well, if your meters are reading more signal than you actually can hear, then your mix might be too low. So the internal meters are reading different levels than the external meters. If you bring it up so that the external meters are reading the levels you want to be at, and the internal meters are clipping, you're causing distortion inside the box. I've confirmed that when the meters clip, even though they're reading a phantom signal that we don't hear, that is digital distortion. You have to trust that those meters are giving you the right indication, but why are they reading louder than they should? And what is that phantom signal? It's definitely not a good thing, but is it an audible bad thing? That's my next adventure to figure out. Cool, cool.